Fallout has no shortage when it comes to creatures. There's hundreds of them we can encounter during our time in the wasteland. Sometimes they are friendly, sometimes they are passive, and other times they attack, either seeking to protect their territory or to make a quick meal. But there are creatures that we have yet to see, creatures mentioned only in random encounters, passing comments, or in pictures and paintings and all things alike. In Fallout New Vegas during the Honest Hearts DLC, you can find a terminal inside Two Skies Cave that belongs to Randall Clark. Upon said terminal is an entry titled Year 2083, where Clark mentions a new insect he's never seen. An insect roughly the size of a dragonfly, this new insect I will come back to in just a moment, but dragonflies, or odonates, have yet to be seen in the Fallout universe, as well as be mentioned by any other NPC than Randall Clark. As for the new insects that Clark witnessed, he describes them as dragonfly-sized creatures that are capable of emitting small pulses of visible light. In this encounter, the strange insects are hunting a cloud of stinging flies, perhaps midges or gnats, and the pulse of visible light that he's able to see must be some sort of weapon, a taser of sorts that can stun or perhaps kill the smaller flies which it then scoops up and consumes. But what could these strange insects really be? As far as insects and electricity go, the combination is a bizarre one, but I did manage to find a Fallout creature that uses electricity. Electro Beetles, descendants of Blister Beetles that would have been encountered in the cancelled Fallout 3 game, also known as Van Buren. The Electro Beetle would have been hostile and willing to attack just about anything that moved, but by killing them you could have harvested bio cells and energy cells for energy weapons. The reason for their unique ability is due to the Great War, specifically the EMP blasts, which eventually manifested electrical powers within their genetic code, allowing the beetles to shock their prey with electric bites, which does sound similar to what Clark saw, but their size is much greater than a dragonfly. Other than the Electro Beetle, I found no other insect that uses electricity, but I did find two real-life examples. The first is the bee, an insect that can sense electric fields, as flowers that are often visited can experience a change in electric charge, a change that the bees can detect and therefore know if a specific flower is worth visiting or not. And the second is the hornet, specifically the oriental hornet, an insect that can convert the sun into usable energy, with pigment in the yellow sections of their exoskeleton trapping light and the pigment in the brown sections converting that light into energy. So far the oriental hornet is the only known insect that can do this, but as to why they do this, that is up for interpretation. The most common theory is the energy is used to regulate their body temperature, while other theories suggest the energy is used to dig or to give their wing muscles a quick energy burst. And perhaps this is what the strange insects that Clark saw were doing, although instead of using the energy to regulate temperature or dig or increase speed, they're using it for hunting, powering an electric bite similar to electro beetles. But as to what these strange insects actually are, I think the giveaway is in how Clark describes their eating habits where he writes the insects scoop up and consume their prey. Insects have four distinct ways of eating food, chewing, lapping, siphoning, and sucking. Of those four, I would say lapping is the closest to scooping, and this style of eating is done by the maxilla and the labium. In short, these mouthparts work together to masticate or chew food. However, the role of the labium in some insects can be adapted for special functions, and the one I'm going to draw particular attention to can be found in the jaws of odonates or dragonflies. In these insects, the labium folds neatly beneath the head and thorax, but can be flicked out to snatch up or scoop up prey back to the mouthparts for chewing. My guess is these strange insects that Clark saw are mutated dragonflies. As for their ability to zap, that could be explained in one of two ways. Either it is similar to Electro Beetles, inherited from the Great War through EMP blasts, which Clark did experience several times in the beginning, or it could be the result of radiation which has given them the ability to convert the sun into usable energy, specifically an electric bite. But since the creature is mentioned only, 
We have no way of knowing what they actually are, or if they can create or convert energy similar to Electro Beetles or the Oriental Hornet. Speaking of Hornets, they too have yet to make a physical appearance, but they are mentioned in the Wasteland holotape minigame as Apocalypse Hornets. Described as grossly oversized insects, Apocalypse Hornets are some of the most fearsome enemies in the Wastes, but that's only the mutated versions. As for ordinary hornets unaffected by the Great War, they too have yet to make a physical appearance, but they are mentioned briefly in Fallout New Vegas during the Dead Money DLC by Vera Keys on the holotape titled Vera Keys Audition. Would you stop? <laughs> Such a kidder. This is Vera Keys auditioning for Love Set Sail. God, this script. Don't get me wrong, I'm happy to have the. W is that a plane overhead? Those bombers are nothing but big hornets buzzing around the sky these days. Is it gone? Alright. In Fallout 4, the Oceanological Instructor has a lot of creatures to talk about and facts to go along with them. Some of those creatures are mentioned only, such as the Gooey Duck, said to be the world's largest burrowing clam, which can live to 150 years. There's also Phytoplankton, hundreds of thousands of which could fit into a single mouthful of sea water, so perhaps they are in fact in the game and they're just so small we cannot see them. And then there's starfish. When bifurcated, some starfish can regenerate into two separate and independent starfish. While these creatures have yet to be seen, some of them could appear in a unique and interesting way. Giant rad starfish, for example, that latch on and slowly digest parts of the player. Maybe they could be knocked off but split apart when damaged, and if given enough time they could regenerate into multiple enemies. In Fallout 76, while securing the Pioneer Scout Challenge badges, several mentioned-only creatures appear during the Entomologist exam, the questions of which aren't important, but the creatures in alphabetical order are as follows. Butterflies, also mentioned by Catherine Swan, who says she sometimes gets a queasy feeling when thinking about abductions, like she's eaten a pot of butterflies. I believe this is a reference to the Mariposa military base in Fallout 1 and 2, as Mariposa is Spanish for butterfly, and the base was home to the super mutants, who were known for abducting countless humans and dipping them into FEV to expand the Master's army. Cicadas Fleas, also mentioned by Abigail Poole during an email concerning Grafton Steel and pollution, comparing the workers rioting to be as thick as fleas on a dog's back. Grasshoppers, also mentioned in Fallout 4, illustrated as the gilded grasshopper atop Fainal Hall. Mayflies, scarab beetles, including dung beetles and ladybugs. Silkworms, Spiders, also mentioned during the Wasteland holotape minigame, as giant, horrendous creatures having six eyes instead of eight, with boils all over their bodies. Spiders also appear on a pre-war poster, warning people to be vigilant as communism is coming. And lastly, weevils. That is a lot of mentioned only creatures. While we don't have fleas, grasshoppers or butterflies, we do have ticks crickets and moths, which are similar. By adding both to the game, I don't think it would have made that much difference in terms of gameplay, but I would like to see giant spiders, with NPCs still very much alive, glued to the giant webs, stored as food, and they can either be rescued for a small reward or looted for a larger one, depending on how good or evil you're wanting to be. We've already heard of Catherine Swan, who mentioned butterflies, but she also mentions another mentioned only creature during a conversation about the Flatwoods monster, and that is the octopus. There is one tale that caught my interest. A story about flashing lights, floating octopi, and, curiously, the smell of hot dogs. Naturally, what some have described as a round octopus-like head, I believe to be a space helmet, which of course, only leads to more questions. Originally, there was going to be a massive sentient octopus in Fallout 4, somewhere inside a Bioshock-themed vault that was ultimately cut from the final version of the game. But the quest titled 20 Leagues Under the Sea, referencing the novel by Jules Verne, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, 
would have seen the sole survivor heading off into the North Atlantic Ocean towards Vault 120. This would have been possible thanks to General Zhao, the captain of the Yangtze, and his pre-war nuclear submarine. Once inside the vault, James, a vault dweller from Vault 120, would have guided the sole survivor through the vault, similar to how Atlas does for Jack in Bioshock 1. As for the octopus, there seems to be a section of the vault called the Vaulted Chamber, an area with large pipes descending from the ceiling into a pool in which the octopus was stored. While the area is unfinished, placeholders do exist, and one of them reads MS-03 Placeholder Overseer 001, suggesting the Overseer would have confronted the sole survivor with a giant octopus in the background. Or better yet, the Overseer was the giant octopus. In Fallout 76, Scout Leader Jaggy mentions both slugs and snails during a joke, something along the lines of What's the only difference between a slug and a snail? Why the shell, of course. I couldn't find any other mention of snails, but I did find one for slugs during the design documents for Van Buren, as giant slugs that were able to move surprisingly fast for their gigantic size. The Prisoner, the would-be title of the playable character, would have been attacked by them in the fields at Twin Mother's Village, and also inside Mystery Caves where an entire colony of them could be found. It would have been possible to destroy this colony and remove the giant slugs from the fields, enabling the villagers at Twin Mothers to safely harvest their crops. And these giant slugs aren't the only creatures mentioned in the design documents that have yet to make an appearance. There's also centipedes. It is unknown how they would have been affected by the Great War. In terms of their physiology, they appear to have remained largely unaffected, but they would have come in one of three colours. Red, blue or green. Giant centipedes are also mentioned in the Wasteland Holotape minigame as hairy, leggy insects with huge pincers and four fangs. Oddly enough, despite them deriving from normal centipedes, they no longer have 30 legs, but eight. And even though they have a terrifying and grotesque appearance, they are one of the weakest enemies in the Pip-Boy game. Hopefully, if they ever rear their ugly heads in the flesh, they prove to be a little more challenging than their digital counterparts. And speaking of a challenge, Desert Stalkers, the giant mutated versions of the Ant Lion, predators unique to the Sonoran Desert, would have been just that. Desert Stalkers attack by burrowing up from the ground, quickly emerging and latching onto their prey with razor sharp mandibles, before dragging them into the earth to be devoured. Somehow, Desert Stalkers would have this supernatural ability to hunt for the weakest person in any group, picking them off before anyone could react, only to quickly vanish and then return later on to do the same again, over and over, until no one is left, or the Desert Stalker has been killed. On a slightly lighter note, giant leeches measuring about two feet long would have been found at the Hoover Dam scum pits, where leeches would swim in and out of the large holes in the ground. They would attack on sight, slowly, but were big enough and strong enough to drain all the blood out of a super mutant in a single go. And there would have also been smaller versions of these monstrosities found in the sewers beneath Jericho, a town forged in the remnants of a water plant near the shore of Great Salt Lake, that while smaller, were just as troublesome. All 25 of these creatures have yet to be seen. So far, they have been mentioned only by NPCs, referenced in design documents, or witnessed in minigames. Hopefully, some of them will appear in the next Fallout game, or in the upcoming Fallout TV show. Until then, we are left to imagine what some of these creatures would have looked like, and wonder what new terrors they would have brought with them into the Fallout universe. Be sure to show your support by liking the video, and subscribing if you haven't already for more Fallout content. If there's anything you would like to see in a later video, leave a comment and I'll see what I can do. With that said, thank you, as always, for watching, and I'll see you in the next adventure.